Okay, so I just want to make a quick video to show you my latest radiant charger using the circuit that's on my website, retali.com. And I really like this layout, and I've seen this done before on one of John Bedini's pages, but that's not why I did it. I just wanted to see how compact I could make this coil and circuit. And I was able to actually fit it into a CD case. So there's a, a quad core coil here with four power wires and then a fifth wire for the trigger. The four power wires together makes it much more efficient. And the more strands you have for the power wire, the better. You run all the wires parallel. So you just wind four wires and then you tie them at each end. There's actually not four transistors or even a need for four transistors. You just use the one and it runs all four wires at the same time. And so what you could do here is you hook up this battery. This would be the primary and this is the charge battery. And this charger charges NICADs very well. This charger is so powerful that it will charge this NICAD battery in about three hours and the battery actually gets warm. So it's taking a really strong charge with extremely high voltage and so far just after the first couple cycles these NICADs are taking a very good charge better than with the conventional charger. This particular arrangement with four wires for the power puts out a lot more power than if you just use a single wire and it has something to do with the skin effect on the wire. The radiant energy travels outside of the wire so if you have four small wires there's more surface area on the outside of the wire than if you just use one larger wire. One larger wire works but it doesn't work as good. Okay so I'll take the cover off and you can take a look. Okay so we've got the heat sink on here and the whole circuit which is all combined on the spool. And the spool lifts off and foam pads to prevent any excessive vibration and also if you want to set it as a standalone charger without a case it sits very nicely on a, a wooden surface without vibrating okay so I'll look it up and I'll turn the power all the way up this is the power adjustment if you turn it clockwise it gives it full power and on these real small batteries you don't need full power and I'll go ahead and hook it up and we'll listen to it okay so we're hooked up the only problem is this charger is so quiet when you're only using 12 volts for the input that you really can't hear it it's an air core the air core gives you the most efficiency with the solid state design with an iron core you just have losses because of the iron since there's no mechanical wheel you're not looking for free mechanical motion with the iron being attracted to the magnets on the wheel and that's the only reason you use an iron core is because you, you get free mechanical energy as the wheel comes around and is attracted to the iron core on this you don't need an iron core and it actually harms performance if you use an iron core so for solid state you want to use an air core air core gives you a lot better charging and it doesn't use any more power because the way this circuit is it just runs at a higher frequency to offset uh, the decreased inductance that the air core has there's less inductance with an air core okay so what I've done is I've rigged up two 12 volt batteries for the input so that gives us 24 volts and if you use 24 volts with this charger you can actually hear it, it puts out enough power that you can actually hear the coil whine and it runs really good at 24 volts. The way I've designed it, it's optimal at 24 volts for the input. Puts out at least 400 volts all the time on the output and very low amperage on the output. So it's not a normal conventional charger and that's not the goal. But the circuit is auto adjusting and this experiment will show you that it's auto adjusting. This knob here is the actual power output, not the frequency. And so if you turn this, you get more power. But I just want to show you that it is an adjustable frequency charger and here we have a water fuel cell and over here we have electrolyte. So I'll add the electrolyte and you can listen to the change in frequency. You should be able to hear it and I'll go ahead and turn it on now. Okay, so hook up the 24 volt power. We'll turn up the power.
you turn the power down, turn the power up. Okay, so you can hear it. And we'll start getting hydrogen. And keep in mind there's almost no current coming out of this at all. It's just sharp DC pulses. And the hydrogen gradually improves as you condition the cell. And for every week that you condition it, you get probably double the output. So it takes a very long time to condition, but it is very high voltage and it is a unique form of electrolysis. So this is really fun to experiment with. Now, if you listen to the frequency, I'll go ahead and take this electrolyte and pour it in. So I'll keep the camera down here so you can hear it. Okay, so a very distinct change in frequency. One note to make that's very interesting is the addition of electrolyte to the water produces a different type of electrolysis. If you look in between the plates, there's very little, if any, gas being produced in between the plates. There is some stray bubbling, but it's not coming off the plates. It's just being mixed around in the water. And if you look at the outside of the plate, all the bubbles are being produced on the outside of the plates on the positive and negative, not on the neutral plates, which are all of the plates in the middle. These are all neutral plates. So something interesting happens if you take the electrolyte out of the water, you get hydrogen on all of the neutral plates. And over time, the hydrogen output increases. And that only happens if you're running high voltage pulses with no electrolyte. So it is a different form of electrolysis, and you can see it with your eye just by looking at it that there are two types of electrolysis and using this charger with tap water you get hydrogen between all the neutral plates so it's a very interesting phenomenon the best thing about this circuit though is that it does tune to the best frequency all the time so no matter what it's always running at the most efficient frequency and if you want to just charge a tiny little battery you just turn the power down so it's an extremely good charger and so far I've been charging NICAD batteries for drills, <clears throat> normal lead acid batteries, and any type of nickel metal hydride AA. It'll charge any of those. So I just wanted to show you another version of this circuit. This is a different type of a layout and it's really compact and you can put the lid on it and it runs so cool that you don't need a cooling fan. So pretty neat circuit. All right, thanks for checking it out, guys. And if you'd like to get more information, retali.com.